This is an industrial dispute, Filipino style. These girls are striking for higher wages, but it's Christmas time and they're having fun. That's typical of the Philippines. We do take our problems with a lot of gaiety, but the problems are no less real for all that. And behind the gaiety, there lies violence. This happy little picket line was later broken up by military and police, as you will hear. I'm Jose Diokno, a lawyer and a Filipino. I'd like to tell you something about my country, and that way, about other third world countries, because our problems are very much alike. Most of all, I'd like to tell you about my people. We're almost 50 million in all, an island people living in about 7,000 islands between the Pacific and the China Sea. More than half of my people are below 20 years of age. Most of us speak English of a sort, and we have about oh, more students in the university than Britain. Our land is beautiful and rich. We have all the resources we need except oil. Yet most of my people are poor and suffer hardship and oppression. How we were thrown into that situation and what we're trying to do to get out of it, some using reason, others using guns, that's what I'd like to tell you about. My family and I live in Manila. My wife and I have 10 children and 8 grandchildren. Often on Sundays, we all get together for lunch. My home is also my office. I lead a group of lawyers who've acquired a reputation for helping people in trouble with the authorities, whom other lawyers are reluctant to help. So people come to see me day and night. These girls are a delegation from those you saw on strike at the beginning of the program. Some were arrested and they have come for advice. After you went on strike, what countermeasures did the management do? The management issues uh, uh, some advertisement that we are uh, illegal strikers and then uh, they even uh, uh, go to the policemen, to the military and to the judges, to municipal judges uh, to issue warrant of arrest, injunctions, even though uh, no preliminary investigation had been made with regards to the strike. Well, were any warrants of arrest issued against any of your members? Uh, yes, uh, 17 officers of the union uh, were issued warrant of arrest and two were arrested. The case of these girls is typical of what's happening in this country with uh, our workers. And see on the supernatural. We believe our own efforts cannot be enough. We seek God's help because we've been made to believe we can't help ourselves. And religion in the past contributed to our sense of powerlessness. The church is changing now, but much of the sense of powerlessness remains. And since this makes many of us seek a father on earth as we do in heaven, this makes it easy for government to be authoritarian, to manipulate and to mislead, like the present government of my country. Ferdinand E. Marcos has been president since 1965. He claims that from a situation of anarchy, he has built a new, peaceful and prosperous society. Now what do we have? We have a government that has been able to do away with uh, 200 private armies, uh, immobilized 250 syndicated uh, gangsters, uh, uh, and uh, we have uh, been able to um, uh, quell a... Uh, uh, leftist, rightist, or communist, rightist uh, uh, rebellion that threatened to take over the government uh, and uh, was about to when the martial law was proclaimed. The um, most important, the most far-reaching, and from my point of view, uh, the uh, key change in the entire uh, uh, 
um, listing of uh, reforms and alterations in our economic, social, and political life would be uh, the uh, internal change in our people, the changes in their attitude, their uh, um, thoughts, and their uh, uh, heart and spirit. Uh, from bankruptcy, we have uh, developed into a viable economy. We increased the uh, minimum wage by more than 50%. So, um, by and large, the um, wage earner uh, it takes home much more now than he did. Mr. Marcos is right. For the small segment of our population who have jobs in the modern sector, they get some spin-offs from the westernized facade of our economy. But at the same time, we have tremendous unemployment, about 25%. What economic development there has been has deliberately favored multinationals who come here to take advantage of our cheap, highly skilled labor, workers who have also been cowed into docility. Production has grown, but it has favored only a few of the people and Mr. Marcos has had to borrow vast sums to set up the infrastructure that multinationals need. Today we have a foreign debt of about 16 billion dollars, eight times what it was 10 years ago. So the method of development, unfortunately egged on by financial institutions, world financial institutions, has been a method of development that is concentrated on simply making the economy grow and not concerned with what is really being produced and, or how it is being distributed. So you have a situation where a lot of our resources and skills are being used to supply the needs of foreign markets and the wants of the elite. And we do have rich families and elite. This is a display of expensive imported watches. There are people here who can consider spending a quarter of a million US dollars on a watch in a developing country that's obscene. Our elite gained access to their world of privilege, as elites always have, by being close to government, whether that government was Spanish, American, or as now, the Marcos family. Their ostentation creates great social tension because they do not invest their money in ways that could develop our economy or create new jobs. The elite have chosen to live behind heavily guarded walls, either because they're afraid of the people or unwilling to mix with them. Cardinal Sin, Archbishop of Manila, also questions President Marcos's priorities. Uh, I would say that the priorities were not well planned. It could have been first the essential needs of the people, and then we go continuously up and up in order that the the most uh, the most uh, not really so important thing could be done later. But what happened is that we started to build big hotels, big uh, centers, telling the whole world that we are already countries of the develop and pride entered and vain glory enter. And so we made our people a victim because of image building. Image building. Far too much time and effort goes into image building of one kind or another. A very pleasant good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rita Gadi Baltazar once again at the reception hall of the Philippine International Convention Center. This afternoon, Madame Imelda Romualdez Marcos and the Honorable Mayor of the City of Jeddah will be signing an agreement declaring the Jeddah Metro Manila Sister City Relationship.
This is Mrs. Imelda Marcos, the President's wife, First Lady, Governor of Metro Manila, and Minister of Human Settlements. Today's image is Madame Marcos, Ambassador of International Goodwill. All part of a continuing ritual of political occasions by which the Marcos family tried to establish a personal dynasty. We are all planning for man. Man as individual and man in community. With man as the center and anchor of all our efforts and affection. This union of Jeddah and Metro Manila, perhaps this can be a beginning of a world order and peace and tranquility for humanity. The Marcoses seem to live in two worlds at once, the world of hard politics and a dream world where the harsh realities of our people's lives hardly exist. Image building is part of a personalized style of politics far removed from any kind of representative democracy. The Marcoses see themselves as fairy godparents, offering from the goodness of their hearts all good things to the people. The Children's Hospital was Mrs. Marcos's personal contribution to the International Year of the Child. She calls it a wonderland, and it is. But it's the kind of fantasy we can't afford yet. Hello. How are you? As a nation, we need first mass health care and mass preventative medicine. Our children in the countryside have almost no medical care. That's where the money should have been spent. It's a delightful and very efficient hospital with a highly trained and devoted staff. But it has cost millions and we don't have the money to run it at full occupancy. This magnificent heart hospital, more image building, was Mrs. Marcos's gift of love to Asia on St. Valentine's Day. It's a sophisticated medical unit, but our main killers are dysentery, gastroenteritis, and tuberculosis. And these are better fought with clean water and sewage systems, and above all, with better food. In the Philippines, it's the simple diseases that kill. We need to control whooping cough and pneumonia before we move into the higher realms of heart surgery. She wanted to build a very, very beautiful basilica, even bigger than the Basilica of St. Peter in Rome. And uh, each businessman were told to contribute and five million. And if they die, they will be buried there. So it will be a basilica of the rich people. She would call that basilica of the infant Jesus. I am so afraid because I believe that it is a crime to have this kind of basilica for the honor and glory of God, and our people are hungry. So I told him first, I told her first, to use the money for shelter, for hospitals, and for the poor. And Mrs. Marcos did it her way. But the people can't afford the houses she's built. That's something the commentator of the government television channel won't tell you. Stand by studio, please. 